So how high tech is paper? So on our trip to Europe, we visited a paper mill. Now this paper mill is fascinating because it uses water power to drive machinery that crushes wood pulp and usually rags. So we're talking like old cotton fiber and crushing it until it's all this slurry. And then you dip in frames into that slurry and kind of shake them off very gently. And then the water drains out and suddenly you have paper. That sounds super basic. What are the ingredients in a sheet of paper? Well, wood pulp. We've had wood pulp since the Stone Age. And if you have a pot, well, I mean, you could squish it up with your hands and kind of do it primitive yourself from scratch. You know, you could make paper. Or could you? One of the things that I am fascinated with as I'm interested in, in the, the chain of technologies required to make a particular thing is dependencies. There are sometimes linchpin technologies that you can't make anything past them without this thing. You can't have computer programs without computers. You can't have uh, swords without metal. You could try making one out of stone, but it would be about this long at the longest and it would break really easily. So the idea of a sword requires metal. For some technologies, the chain of events required to make them is actually a lot simpler in like material concerns than it was in terms of history. An example of this off the top of my head is the fan, the forge fan made by primitive technology. He made a reciprocating forge fan that uses the same kind of squirrel cage design that modern forge fans use, except he was able to do it with only unfired clay and some sticks, twigs, and a little bit of twine. I mean, he was able to strip that technology back to the Stone Age really easily. There weren't a lot of missing elements required to make it work. But what about paper? So the ingredients for paper are really simple. Wood pulp, water. But the question is, can you manufacture it? Now the frames they were using to make paper in the water mill were made out of a bunch of extremely fine metal rods, or another one was made out of an extremely fine metal mesh. So how high tech is paper? Well, it is more high tech than the screen because you have to have the screen first. Without the screen, you can't make paper. And so however high tech your screen is, you can't have paper before that point. And so that's how high tech paper is. Apparently paper is as high tech and a little bit more so than extremely precisely made metal screens. Unless you can find a way to get the same result with a more primitive tool. So my question is how low tech could you make paper? In other words, how low tech could you make the screen and still make something that we can call paper? The Chinese have been making it for over a thousand years. They came up with it first and credit goes to them. But I don't know what they were using for a screen. And that is something that I'm going to have to hunt down to get a better answer for this. I am interested in linchpin technologies for a couple of reasons. The first one is I want to learn how to restart civilization from scratch. And so I'm constantly looking for like the the ancestry, the heritage of a particular technology to try to understand where it is and how fast I could get to it. I'm interested in the Stone Age, but frankly, my interest in the Stone Age is to get into the Bronze and Iron Ages as fast as I possibly can, which means if I can skip steps, that's an awesome thing. For example, that forge fan that primitive technology made, that means that I can have a working bellows and start working with metal before I have to, you know, get leather, which means suddenly I'm not looking for ingredients that try to run away from me. <laughs> But there's an idea encapsulated in this that's really interesting. It's charting the chain of your dependencies. And they're not always where you think they'll be. One way of thinking about the high-tech status of paper is to look at it in terms of prerequisites. What are the prereqs that you have to have in order to make paper? One of those is a metal screen. And so all the steps to get you up to metal screen have to come before you can have paper. But if you're creative enough, maybe you can find another way to meet the same requirements. And then you can avoid having all those prerequisites to get to where you want to go. This is something that is incredibly useful when you're working with, say, a university degree. You may have a prerequisite, but you found another way to meet the same goals. Creatively going lateral to say, hey, I already took those engineering classes. Maybe I don't need to take that math class or, you know, something along those lines. In my own undergrad degree, I was able to swap out a couple of English classes that dealt with theory with a couple of philosophy classes that I had already taken. And therefore, I was able to graduate a lot sooner and spend more time on the stuff I was actually interested in. So this type of lateral thinking, looking at prerequisites, and then creatively trying to address the same problem in a different way.
a really cool thing. Except sometimes you get stuck, and it really is a prerequisite. So maybe there's something about being able to tell the difference between those two. Anyway, if you guys have any ideas for how to make paper in a more primitive way that doesn't require a highly precise metal screen, because at the moment that's probably beyond my ability to make with Stone Age tools, then please leave comments below. I would love to hear your ideas. Maybe we can turn that into a project in the future. And if you're interested in making paper from scratch and printing books and making things and, and prerequisites and dealing with the administration as you try to swap out credits, then please hit the like button and subscribe below. And look forward for more content from Good and Basic.